All right, so just jumping on here. I know I mentioned that I was going to be live tonight at 8.30. I um, was also going to be live with um, Heather, but she's not feeling good, so we're not going to be live dueling tonight, um, but just me. So self-aware narcissist trying to give some insight into it and wanted to talk some to some people who had some questions about narcissism or if anybody's been watching some of my content just about narcissism, how it affects other people, how it affects lives, how it affects marriages. And um, a lot of times we've just been talking through, I know last time we talked through uh, different things as far as like narcissism when in regards to uh, uh, in regards to like kids and like how that works as far as like kids growing up and how like narcissism affects them. So yeah, just coming on here, trying to see if there's anybody on that wanted to talk through some stuff narcissism wise. Uh, again, I mentioned uh, Heather's not joining us tonight, so we were going to have a dual live, but anyways, so thanks for one person joining, uh, but yeah, so I don't know if you checked out my page or anything like that, or if you've seen any of the stuff that I've posted about narcissism, um, but I'm a self-aware narcissist, been in counseling now and going to therapy and trying to learn how to get better. Um, learn how to work through a lot of different things narcissist wise um, and how that's affected like my life, um, my marriage, um, a lot of things like that. So anyways, that's why I'm jumping on tonight to talk about narcissism and how that affects different people. But yeah. All right. Let's see. And invite a couple people onto here. And there's a couple people that were thinking about coming on. All right, let's see. All right. Just inviting a couple of people on here to see if anyone's going to jump on this live and just ask any questions, talk through some narcissist stuff. Let's see. There we go. I'm just sharing it to a couple of people that I know want to know where you're joining. So I was going to be on here live tonight with uh, Heather Coleman Voss, um, but she's not feeling good. She's got some uh, COVID symptoms going on, so she's not feeling good. She's a little sick. So we're planning on doing a dual live next week at uh, the same time, so Thursday at 8.30 as well to be able to jump on. So if anybody, if, if y'all didn't catch some of our live last week, we were able to go live for about an hour or so last week to be able to talk through different things about narcissism, how it affects different people, how it affects uh, marriages, uh, kids, everything like that. Uh, I was able to take it and like put it on my YouTube. I'm slowly working on recording some of it and putting it on YouTube. So I'll drop some things on there as well. Um, I'm slowly working on recording some of it and putting it on YouTube. So I'll drop some things on there as well. Um, wish it wasn't something that, you know, I would deal with or like struggle with, but it's like, a, uh, at this point in time, it's kind of like an ingrained thing. So it's trying to like relearn habits. It's trying to relearn like how to interact, how to connect with people, how to connect emotionally, um, things like that. I don't think they'll ever be at the place where I don't have any narcissism or where I'm like healed or anything like that. Um, but I do think there's a point where I can start to learn how to control it and how to grow from it and how to kind of work through some of those narcissist behaviors because by now they're just natural. So like it's, it's easy for me to, in a conversation, like want to start lying or want to start gaslighting or stuff like that. And that's, that's one thing that's nice about being more self-aware is sometimes I can catch them. Um, or other times like my wife will catch them and say something to me and be like, Hey, like, I think you're starting to gaslight me now. Like, 
it's kind of awkward, but you know, it's something that we're able to kind of work through a little bit easier now than what we could in the past. It was something that we couldn't in the past. Is it frustrating? Um, yes, no, it's definitely frustrating to have, have those traits. It's frustrating to have those thought processes like going on in my head and my mind, like, um, like thinking through different things or having my mind like think a certain way or like automatically jump to like want to lie or like be in the middle of a conversation, just start off like in a lie and then all of a sudden be like, okay, wait a second. Like, that's actually not true. I need to step back and actually say, Hey, this is actually what happened or this is what I'm going through. Um, that's hard, but working with a, um, working with a therapist, like definitely has been helpful and definitely has been something that I've been working through, um, a lot as far as like the narcissistic tendencies, how it's like so easy and like trying to figure out like the triggers and like the things, um, that I go through. How do you internally experience remorse and empathy? uh empathy not really um there's not really like a ton of like empathy that i feel um towards other people or empathy like if something happens to another person like unless it's unless it's happened to me um there's a lot of times that i struggle to be able to like relate to it so for instance like early on in my marriage um my wife struggled with um well still struggles with like anxiety and so like early on in my marriage i just like discounted it i was like you know that's just not a thing. I was like, you just you need to trust God more or something like that. Because like, it wasn't something that I'd ever struggled with or dealt with. So in my mind, like, I didn't even know like how to connect with it um, or how to like work through it kind of a thing. Um, as far as like remorse, like remorse isn't as much of a big, uh, I would say it's not as non-existent as empathy, but it's like very small, like remorse and guilt are kind of things that um, I process like quickly or like a lot of times like narcissists will kind of like flip a switch and like process quickly and then kind of like move to the side or move past or try to think like what's next that way they don't have to think about it um same kind of idea as far as like shame uh like a narc a lot of times is influenced by shame or like their own insecurities but they're only trying to move past that as quick as possible so they don't have to feel that shame anymore excuse me I'm um, curious to know what type your enneagram, uh, enneagram your wife is. Yeah, my wife, my wave is a three wing two, so I'm a, a an eight wing seven, and my wife's a three wing two. If you know about the enneagrams, so I love the enneagram test. I think it's a fantastic test. I think it's one of the best ones out there, just showing like who people are and kind of like what drives them versus like your disc or your Myers Briggs or your sixteen personalities. Those shows you those show you like top level or like communication or like work communication things like that but like enneagram kind of like dives to the core i think everybody should take an enneagram test um what do you think you would need to fully heal i don't know um that's like a tough one i don't i don't know that there's like one specific thing that i'm like okay if i change this thing then i wouldn't have narcissism or if i change this one thing then um I wouldn't deal with that. Like, I don't know. That's a very, very good question. Um, Because I would say, like, there's a lot of aspects about narcissism. There's a lot of aspects about me that I need to, like, work through. I need to figure out of how I process things or think through things or emotionally connect or disconnect from people, things, like, all kinds of stuff. That's, uh, I don't know. If I could wave a magic wand, maybe it'd be just to remove narcissism, but like, I don't really know exactly how that would look. That looks like a step-by-step kind of thing. Yeah, like past trauma. Um, So I I had a period of time where I worked through some past um, trauma and like some past just like mental things that were kind of like holding me back for a period of time, just like a, a previous relationship a long time ago. And so I actually went through um, some EMDR therapy. And that was actually like really helpful. Uh, at first I thought they were just like crazy and like quacks, but after I started doing it for a little bit, uh, I was actually able to make some progress and kind of work through a couple of things using that therapy, um, and be able to heal from some past stuff. There's still a lot of other stuff that I don't even realize has developed me the way I am or has helped me like become who I am now. Um, but as far as like dealing with some of that in the past, I was able to work through some of that using the EMDR therapy. Um, 
So when my behavior directly or negatively affects my life, how do I feel in that moment? Uh, it can kind of depend. Like it could really just depend on on what's going on. So like if my behavior negatively affects my wife and I ask her what's wrong and she doesn't tell me, like that'll like piss me off. Like that'll like frustrate me. Um, like if if it's something where I see it like makes her sad and then I'm like, okay, I just screwed up again. Like that sometimes will end up prompting more like annoyance or like frustration. Um, it really just depends on sometimes like how it's received or how it comes across. And I'm still trying to figure out and understand like the triggers and what prompts what on either side. Uh, a little stuffed up today. Uh, but yeah. So I don't know, have, have you guys had, you know, experience of, uh, you know, being with a narcissist or being in a narcissistic relationship on, on either side, um, guys or girls depends, but like, uh, for y'all watching, like, have you, have you dealt with a narcissist before? Or are you pretty sure you're involved with one in the past, et cetera? Uh, best advice for the wife of a narcissist, uh, set boundaries and hold them and keep consequences and stick true to your word. Like don't let, don't let the, the narc like push you so much that you're not going to actually stick um, with what you want or with what you need. And so like making sure, making sure that you are setting clear boundaries and making sure that you're following up with the consequences when those boundaries are broken um, and that you're investing in yourself and making sure that you as a person are strong internally and in who you are. Um, and narcissists a lot of times like want to get like a reaction. They want to get a reaction from other people. They want to, you know, they want to poke a reaction out of somebody. So um, one thing we talked about the other time is, is um, going like gray rock, you know, not responding to a lot of things. And sometimes that'll piss them off. Um, but other times like over a period of time that eventually like helps as far as like, if they can't get a reaction, they're going to slowly eventually like lose interest. I'm going to move on in one sense. Okay. So with a, a divorcing one, there's a, a covert narcissist. Yeah. So covert narcissists are definitely tricky sometimes to be able to identify. <clears throat> um, yeah. Very, very true. So that's, that's tough as far as like divorcing and going through that. Like that's a lot, especially trying to figure out how to co-parent with with a narcissist or how that works because then you have, you know, pinning the kids back and forth. Like it can be very like difficult. Um, yeah. So your mom is a narcissist and you married a narcissist. Unfortunately, that tends to go hand in hand. Um, depending on like how a person is raised, a lot of times will end up like attracting them to, you know, another narcissist or things like that. So, um, yeah. Yeah, so like sometimes like the narc will thrive on, you know, feeling in control of manipulating the other person, um, you know, getting the desired like reaction out of the other person, you know, etc. So like it can be really, really exhausting. I know one thing that I've seen a decent amount recently on, on like Lee Hammock stuff and a couple other people, you know, just about like the narcissist and like sleep deprivation or like the narcissist like keeping people awake um, or like just like frustrating those people like beyond belief to to get a reaction to get them to leave like etc but that's been something i've definitely been seeing a little bit more of just talk about um but yeah it can be definitely very very exhausting very frustrating for sure and so uh, let's see if i missed anything But yeah, um, opposition component of behavior is beyond rushing. Yeah, um, I mean, a, a narcissist a lot of times is gonna is gonna behave in a very frustrating way. You know, they're gonna push your buttons. They're gonna frustrate you to to no end. Um, and then they end up coming through and like lying, gaslighting, like everything. So like I've been saying for a while that like like all narcissists they um they lie and they cheat and they have addictive natures so they lie they have addictive natures and they cheat so like they lie about everything you know they might be gaslighting manipulating like whatever it might be they might be lying to themselves lying to their partners things like that uh, they have addictive natures so a lot of times they'll be uh addictive as far as like the aspect of you know they'll have a 
um, a pornography addiction, or they'll have uh, an they'll be an alcohol addiction, or you know maybe more of um uh like a drug addiction or like different things like that like a lot of times a narc will have some type of addictive personality like gambling or like anything like that um and then you also have narcs that are typically like a cheater um and and that could be like physically cheating that could be like emotionally cheating that could be like mentally cheating that could be like cheating on you like with himself like putting himself like higher than you to the point where like you know you don't even matter. And, and that's ultimately like what a narc obviously does. Um, uh, let's see. Yes. No, I do have, I do have kids. I have a, a two year old daughter. So, um, two year old, uh, baby girl. She's, she's awesome. She's crazy. Um, we definitely think she's going to be, uh, probably like an Enneagram seven, uh, just for their personality and everything. She's getting into that fearless stage for sure. So I think like for me, like trying to avoid passing on the narcissistic tendencies uh, is really like trying to be conscious, conscious of like connecting with her on like an emotional level, uh, which is really hard. You know, it's hard because like, you know, I don't automatically have like that empathy. So there's sometimes where um, something happens to her and like my, my response to her isn't necessarily like 100% genuine, but I'm trying to like model something that my wife has already done, like getting on her level and like talking to her of like, you know, Hey, like, I know you're upset right now or like giving her a hug or like stuff like that stuff that might not be like natural, um, to me, but trying to keep that relationship open and build those like emotional connections so that she's able to be like emotionally vulnerable because that's ultimately a lot of times ultimately what affects like a narcissist. And I know that affected me a lot growing up was not being able to be emotionally vulnerable with my parents and being able to be open. And so like, I know, um, someone mentioned like a husband has no trauma in his past. So it's mind blocking how you develop this. Like, yeah, and I totally get that. Totally understand that. So like when I was looking back at like my life and saying like, okay, like what trauma did I go through? I didn't have this big trauma. Well, when we started diving into it from like a therapy session, um, looking more into it, like my trauma wasn't like a physical or a mental, but it ended up being like some type of like emotional trauma. And that's not necessarily that someone was like emotionally abusive or anything like that, but it can just be going through life uh, having a certain type of like emotional connection that's lacking or a way to be able to connect with other people that's not there at all that ends up being traumatizing. And so for me, there is an aspect of um, that emotional connection, like not the emotional vulnerability, not being there for a period of time. And then a couple people came to my life and it was there. And then, um, a little bit after that, I was like taken away. So like just going back and forth, like trying to figure out like what prompted that, like that stuff we're still diving into. But some of that for me goes back to emotional vulnerability because I didn't have this big, like traumatic event in my life or anything like that. Triangulation, triangulation, really a narcissistic characteristic, always a third party involved. I wouldn't say like always um, uh, a narcissistic uh, characteristic, but I'd say like often like a narc is going to have a third party involved because a narc is often like cheating. Like they normally have, you know, a side person. Uh, they normally have uh, an emotional connection with someone else or things like that. So there's normally a, a third party or or let's say it's not a third party, but a third thing, you know, that that really is um, in their life and is like taking over a certain aspect of their life. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't say it's only narcissistic, um, but I would say it, it tends to be easy for it to happen. Um, control, no responsibility for action, lies, lack of empathy. Like, yeah, definitely, definitely some narcissistic tendencies and concepts there. Narcs need to feel in control and protect the person behind the mask. Don't know the real narc. That's very true. Like a narc oftentimes, like uh, we talked about this the, the other week a little bit as far as like the narc and like the mask. And I think I said something that, you know, kind of surprised some people is like someone was asking like the idea of like, hey, like, is it is it scary for you in one sense when the mask starts to slip? And for me, as I progress in like learning about this stuff and like starting to become more aware of like who I am and like what I'm going through, the scary part isn't when the mask slips. The scary part for me is not knowing which part of me is the mask. That's the part that like ends up being like freaky of like my response right now, is this me or is this my mask? Is this 
like narcissistic Ben or is this like the real Ben or vice versa? You know, it, it ends up getting like confusing sometimes. And, and sometimes that's because of all the lies, all the lies that I've told myself, all the lies that I've grown up with, the like gaslighting to myself and like rewriting history, like going back through and being like, no, that didn't happen. You different things like that. Um, ends up getting confusing sometimes uh, for sure. So basically, shame is the strongest emotion you feel. Whoops, just move. But you do everything to suppress it. Yeah, I mean, I think shame is like a big motivation for a lot of people, and a lot of people don't realize that. But I think with narcissists, especially, shame is a really big uh, emotion and like motivator because a narc is taking that shame and they're trying to do whatever they can to get out of it. So if I'm feeling shame for something I did to you, if I can make you feel that shame or if I can make you feel awful, then I feel better about myself. And, you know, it's an awful like back and forth kind of a thing. But yeah, a lot of times shame, uh, sometimes like insecurity um, can, can even be like what's underlying a lot of narcissists. Zero empathy, always anger at my reaction is disloyalty, but no ownership of wrongdoings. Yeah, like, you know, getting mad that you're upset or you're hurt, but not really like owning up, you know, that's, that's very hard for a narcissist to do to actually admit, you know, to actually admit that they're wrong, you know, to actually admit that, you know, they did something like you can catch a narcissist in like the middle of a lie and they'll just keep lying straight through your teeth. Like, I don't know well, that's what I meant or no, this or no, this, you know, they'll find a way to change it, to tweak the story. So they still feel like they're not in the wrong, you know, but it just keeps going, keeps going. Cause what they do, narcs lie. And, I, that's one of the hardest, hardest habits to break. So like, you know, for me, like thinking through like lying and stuff like that, like it's had to be like a progress. It's had to be a progression of like, okay, like I was at the point where I had these lies and I'd go back and it'd be like a year later, I'd finally tell my wife, Kayla, the truth. And then like, you know, it'd be like six months later and then it'd be like a month later. And, you know, then it'd be like a week or things like that. So like, now, like, we're getting closer to the place where, like, you know, a lie or, like, something that feels like an automatic lie that, like, rolls off my tongue uh, is closer to be, like, you know, an hour to maybe max of, like, a day later or something like that. But that's something I'm, like, consciously trying to work on of, like, hey, I just said this. Like, I need to backtrack. I need to be, like, okay, like, that's not true. Like, this is an untruth. Like, I need to go back through and say, like, hey, this is something that I lied about. Like, I need to come clean and explain you know, things like that, but that's very hard and it's easy to feel like shameful, you know, which is easy to trigger more tendencies, go back and forth. Does a diagnosed sociopath trying to distance you off? Yeah, I mean, set those boundaries, set those boundaries of communication, of connection, all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, sure thing, Tiffany. So trying to, trying to give insight, trying to build awareness, just have people understand um, for sure. Um, he isn't self-aware. He doesn't admit it. Says I guess you're wrong. Yeah, I mean, typically the only way like a narc like might even admit that he's a narc is if he's actually being told from the professionals in one sense that he is a narc, but um, not all the time. So I mean, that's very it's very like difficult and all. Um, Mama four monkeys. Hey. Uh, don't you ultimately fear being humiliated, folks finding out who they really are? Um, folks finding out who you, who they really are, like, I could see that. But, like, humiliated, yes, sometimes. But, like, for me, that's not as, um, I guess, not as big. I, I think part of the fear is, like, mitigated depending on the type of narc or, like, how the narc is portrayed to other people. So, like, for me, like... I don't think I fear humiliation as much because there's not many situations that I would get in where I would be humiliated. Um, and maybe that's like just prideful, like narc kind of talk, but like, um, I guess like, like, like for me and also part of it's partner with my Enneagram eight and just like my high D personality, like kind of a thing. Like I don't like anybody like holding something over my head. So like if I had, you know, a former like affair partner be like, hey, I'm going to go tell, you know, so and so that this happened. Be like, okay, let's go. You know, like, like, there's not really like a section of like, oh my gosh, like, no, like, that's going to be so embarrassing. It's more or less like, okay, like, if that's what you're going to do, like, 
I'll take it a step further. I'll go tell everybody, you know, something like that um, would be like a, an automatic, like wanting to have that type of response because like, I'm going to be like, like, no, like you're not going to humiliate me. Like I'm going to be in control of what I say, what people know here, like that kind of stuff. I mean, again, it goes back to narcissism, very like manipulative. Did therapists also speak to your wife? Oh no, my current therapist, uh, she hasn't spoken to my wife. So we go to the, from London. That's awesome. Thanks for joining from London. That's super cool. Um, do you have an accent? I'm just kidding. Um, so there was, yeah, so I, I go, so, so we actually go the same, we actually go the same place. Um, so it's, it's actually kind of ironic. So little transparency. So we go to, we go to one counseling place and, um, there's actually four of us that go there. I don't have contact with two of the others because they're former affair partners. Um, but they actually go there and we all see separate, separate therapists. So there's four different, um, four different therapists that we see. Um, I don't have contact with the other two, so you don't have to like worry about that. But like my wife goes to one therapist, I go to another therapist. And then currently we're on like week three of going to like couples counseling. Um, and we're going with, uh, um, this one guy that we started with, he's, he's decent but we're trying to figure out like if this is going to be a good fit or like what we need to do or what we need to change um as far as like who we're with and all um counseling wise um let's see all right minus criminal charges that only i know about for instance um oh okay so I, going back to the humiliation so yeah i could see like you for for that, um, it might not be necessarily that the narc is like afraid of being humiliated. Um, maybe it is. Maybe I'm just like talking on both sides of the mouth. I'm not trying to. Um, it could be like the narc is more concerned about protecting like their image. And so like, you know, if they're if they think that there's a chance that like the image or the mass that they've built in front of other people is going to get tainted or going to get shown differently, then, yeah, I could see them like really like being afraid of that or like being like aggressive protecting that or like coming back at the other person. Um, yeah. Knowing holding something over a narc only motivates the narc to try to cover the truth. Yeah. And I, and I'd say it also depends because like for me, like I'll cover it harder or I'll just blow it completely up. I'm like, because, because for me, I want to be in control. And so if I can be in control of how the news comes out or if I can be in control that the news comes out, like it doesn't even have to be, good or bad news, but it could just be like, you know, if this is what someone's holding over my head, be like, okay, let's go take care of it. Like for me, I, I'm very like, for me, you don't blackmail me. Like if you blackmail me, like I'll blow it out of the water, like right away, because I'm like, I'd rather have everybody in the world know than I would someone try to hold over my head. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, and, and that might be different with different narcissists, different people for sure. Um, So you both see separate counselors. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, uh, we talked, we talked some last week, um, on here when I was on live with Heather, um, just about like the idea of like going to counseling. And she said like a lot of times people recommend for narciss narcissist and narcissist spouse, like not to go to couple of counseling together. Um, which I totally get that because some people, some people commented saying like, yeah. some people commented saying that you know they would go to counseling together and then after counseling like the narc would just go off on the other person in counseling that might be an experience that you had you know if you went to couples counseling um for me part of it was also looking at it being like you know if that happens then it gives you a pretty clear idea of like what's going on like they obviously don't want change they obviously aren't interested in like actually making a difference so if you're going to couples counseling and the response leaving the counselor is like reactive abuse um uh, is like sorry not reactive well reactive to the counseling but like is abuse like emotional mental physical whatever it might be like that should paint a pretty clear picture pretty fast this narcissist isn't interested in changing um yeah image yeah definitely don't Definitely don't um, want their image. Hey, Josh. Uh, yeah, good to see you. Sorry, I'm catching on the comments. Yeah, so uh, for a couple of people, if, if you came back on, I think um, I was going to be live with Heather tonight. But we were planning on that. Um, Heather's not feeling too good tonight, so she messaged me earlier. 
Um, she had some of her like COVID-19 like symptoms kind of flare back up. So she was like, I really don't think I can make it tonight. So as of right now, unless something changed, we'll advertise again. And we're going to plan on doing a dual live next week as well. Um, Thursday at the same time. So I, I think just like in talking with her a little bit, I think we might try to see about making it maybe like a every other week kind of a thing. Um, it felt like we had some really good engagement and responses from a lot of people. So hopefully that'll be something people might be interested in. Um, but yeah, Josh, thanks for joining. Um, yeah, Tiffany, definitely like image. They don't want to be labeled a narcissist. Um, you guys did couples. Okay. So yeah, like perfect example, like a disaster, but an individual, he seems to be more arrogant. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, he's, if he's a narc, then he's going to be arrogant, you know? When Eric says they love you, what does that actually mean for them? Um, I would say typically across the board, if an arc says they love you, it their their love or affection is based on what they get from you. Um, so like how much love they that you give, um, they're interested in getting more of that. They're interested in like what can they you know, narc, narcs are like investors. They're trying to put in like two cents and get two dollars back. You know, and you keep doing that, you you run the bank out of money. Um, uh, yes, if it's used for manipulating purposes. Oh, okay, going back to yeah. After discard, why will why will he not completely move out of our home? Most of his things are here. Um, yeah, a lot of times, like after discard, like the narc, you know, still doesn't want to leave. Like he still wants to keep that supply, or he still wants to keep. Sometimes it might be just a form of like safety. Like as screwed up as that is, it might be a form of of safety of like, this is still comfortable. It's awful, but it's comfortable for the narc because the narc's already used to that awful, awful setting. Um, is it blackmail if it's truth? No, it's not blackmail. It'd be like, it, it would feel like blackmail if someone's holding something over your head for the purpose of um, manipulating you or like conforming you or like, you know, if you don't do this, then I'm going to tell this. Like that type of thing, I would loosely term that as like, blackmail because they're trying to get manipulated response out of you so like if someone came to me and they're like hey like if you don't do this i'm gonna go tell this person they're like okay let's go tell this person like that that's kind of what i meant with that um couples counseling was insane but like, yeah yeah very true like you're gonna see it really quick so i would say like i wouldn't recommend people to go to couples counseling if it's a narcissist i'd, I'd recommend like individual work first um, but also like if you end up going to couples counseling with a narcissist, like you should be able to see pretty quickly, like, um, you know, if they want to change, you know, if they're interested, um, is it, or was it your love for your wife that pushed you to change? Um, no, not at all. So unfortunately like that didn't do, uh, love for my wife didn't change me and didn't mold me or push me to the place where I was like, okay, let me go get change. Um, because like it didn't have that effect on me. Like the the love that I had for my wife didn't stop me for the the five affairs I had in our marriage. And, you know, unfortunately, like that's how it went. Like it took a lot of other things to be able to get me to the place of admitting that I was a narcissist and then admitting that that was even a possibility and then admitting like, okay, maybe I need to go to counseling. And then like six months later, like actually looking and starting to go to counseling, like, it definitely took a, a long process. So like some of the stuff that that's pushed me to change, um, one was I got involved with another narcissist, uh, another girl that had a BPD. Uh, so a lot of like narcissistic tendencies. And then I started seeing the, ten the, the narcissistic tendencies and traits that I had towards her um, being mirrored back to me and being used on me. Uh, and so that started waking me up of like, hey, like I actually have some of this stuff. Like this is actually what it looks like. Um, and then there was like a couple other things. There was like a friend in my life that like really started influencing me and just calling me out on different stuff that I didn't realize that I had, that I didn't realize it was there. Uh, and then there's also God, like there's also just like conviction from a higher power kind of like telling me like something is wrong. Like this is not how normal humans should interact. This is not how normal life should be, you know, that I had to start looking into. But the the process and the change um, was a long one. I'm not, I'm not changed. I'm not healed. I'm not fixed <laughs> anything like that. Like I'm, I am day by day struggling, fighting, trying to figure out like, how do I grow? How do I get better um, with the stuff I'm working through? But yeah, hopefully, hopefully that'll 
help answer that question. Personal things, and there's a reason to the contact. Yeah, I mean, definitely like leave personal things like gives you a reason to come back. You know, you leave 10 things, it gives you 10, 10 reasons to be able to come back. Um, yeah, no, he's just he's just manipulating you. If he's blocking you on one and texting you on another, like that's just that's just games. You know, it's just trying to, to get you to a place where you're more vulnerable, you're more open to taking back and to accept whatever um, punishment in one sense he thinks, you know. My narc ex signed a lease with me and then moved to a different state without me knowing, plus other things. Um, do you think part of that is because I was catching on to some of his lies? Yeah, I mean, that could definitely be a part of it, you know, catching on to, to some of his lies, like getting ready to call him out or acknowledge like, hey, the, this is actually something that's going on that you're struggling with. And before you can actually call him out, like, poof, he's gone. Um, unfortunately, sometimes it it works that way. So, um, but yeah. Uh, what other questions do you guys have um, about narcissism or um, if anybody's interested, like I did the other day, like if anyone wants to go live, like we can do interaction live as well. There's people that want to ask some questions or things like that live for other people as well. Um, he hoovered all his exes, but not me. Why would that be? Hmm. That's tough. Like that could be a couple of different reasons, you know, just like thinking through um how long ago was it that that he left? Let's see if she see if she says so, um so like sometimes I would say like he might have hoovered um all the other people, but he hasn't hoovered you yet. Um but it can't okay, so nine months. So it might be like not yet, or it might be, okay, so you discard him. So that's good. Um, so did you block him on everything? I was just going to have you go live and I just hear your accent and talk to you as well. Um, but yeah, like, um, you know, with that, like a lot of times, like he might, you know, be saving it and maybe he's going to hoover you like down the road kind of a thing. Um, or it could be that, when you discarded him, he like officially discarded you and like, he's like done. Like, I don't know, like with the other exes, maybe they didn't, maybe they didn't discard him. You know, maybe he's one that discarded them. So you can still like keep them around if you want to do it kind of a thing. Um, but yeah, that's, that's like a tough one. I don't think I have like a cookie cutter answer with that because honestly, like narcs are like very similar in a lot of ways, but also it's like very very different like a lot of them have like different triggers a lot of them have like different aspects to them um but yeah uh i'd have to think on that a little bit more i feel like i have some thoughts but they're not all like connected or put together as far as like why would he hoover all the others but not you um it could it could be by the time like he discarded you discarded like you discarded he he blocked it could be that he already had someone lined up. So as a result, he was like, I'm not going to waste time hoovering this person when I'm already, you know, in an affair with this other person, or I'm already like going to this other person. Like sometimes they won't hoover at all because they already have someone lined up. So maybe that relationship is still going, or maybe he's with someone else. I don't know. I'm kind of, I'm, I'm guessing a lot because I don't know the situation, the person, all that kind of thing. Um, so an arc can get like supply from like anything. So like a, a narc, you know, a lot of times they'll get supply, like from people like they can get supply from like addictive natures you know uh, addictive things that they're like stuck with or whatever or they can get supply through you know like uh like a narc can get supply through through work you know through being a workaholic or through like connections at work or people at work so like supply doesn't always doesn't always mean like an affair um or like cheating i, I do think I do think like pretty much 99% of narcs cheat period. Um, but like supply wise, there's a lot of different ways people could get, um, supply. So like workaholic, addictive nature, you know, emotional affair, like, uh, uh, physical connection, emotional connection, um, you know, different, different ways. If there's ways, um, you know, like, uh, a narc could get supply by being a really good gamer and having people give him praise. 
or her praise or whoever. Like, uh, like, uh, like just getting supply, getting to the place where their ego is so high and they feel like there's people out there like worshiping them or like looking up to them or like thinking they're like the best thing ever. Like that could be like a form of supply. There's a lot of different ways, but that's what I have off the top of my head. Um, it's hard to even admitted narcs. Oh, where'd they go? Narcs in my world, even here, but I appreciate it. Thank you. Trying to input best again. Is it easy for a guy to snap out of his cheating behavior? No, not easy at all. If it was easy, there should be less people that do it. But no, it's a, uh, um, especially if it becomes like a habit or if it becomes something that's been like a repetition or like a cycle or like this happens, then trigger happens, then here we go, then back down to the shame and back right up. Like it's a vicious cycle. And so like for people to be able to, I don't think anybody can just like snap out of it. Um, I think sometimes it's a long process of, you know, either people like attempting and failing or, you know, like for instance, like um, for me, like, you know, the, the first affair that I had, like me and the other person like confessed it, like we confessed it to our pastors, we confessed it to my wife, like all that kind of stuff. And then like the next things that happened, like I didn't confess those, like they kind of like built up and then I confessed one while I was like still with another one. And it's just like, so there's things that like, you don't even understand at times like why it's happening. You don't even understand like what the struggle is or what the lies are. And you're trying to figure that out. But at the same time, you still are like, Oh, but I'm getting supply from here. So I want to keep that going. Um, so I would say it's very, very hard. Um, and I, I would say like not impossible, but impossible for like the snap, you know, possible for like one day be cheating the next day, not be cheating. Like it takes, it takes time. Um, it takes a lot of time to like work through, a lot of things um let's see lots of good comments here honestly best best way to get back or open their eyes what made you decide to change so part of my decision change was being involved with another narc um and and that really opened my eyes um part of what decided me to change was seeing my life and seeing that my life was like different than a lot of other people like i was lacking in emotions lacking in empathy um had a really hard time like connecting with people had a huge ego, like all this stuff was just like there. And I was like, this does not seem normal. Like I even asked my wife, I was like, do you think I'm like, I don't know, like a sociopath or something like what's going on? And like, even started like researching and looking it up and I was like, okay, well that doesn't fit. This doesn't fit. You know, she was like, I think you're a narcissist. And I was like, I don't even know what that is. And so like went, went and looked into it and I was like, no, I'm not this. Yeah, I was. Um, but like, it's hard because a narcissist oftentimes is going to go off of like logic. So like if you try to emotionally appeal with a narcissist, like you've just lost the battle because like nine times out of 10, they don't give a care. Like they don't care at all um, that you're like crying or like emotionally like pleading of like, I think you're a narcissist. I think you need a change. Um, unfortunately. Um, what are the signs the narc is about to abandon their kid? Uh I don't know that I, I don't know that I can say that there is concrete ones or that is a, a definition because you have a narc, you know, keep the mask up and then all of a sudden just walk out. I think we had someone else in here that said, you know, said something about the comments of like all of a sudden they signed the lease and then they were gone. You know, um, I don't I don't think I have a good answer to that. I'm sorry. Like I don't think there's a definite like sign of this is coming. Um, I think the signs would probably be closer to like, you know, what are the narcissistic tendencies? What's the lying, manipulation, gaslighting, high sense of ego, like um, pride, like not admitting they're wrong, like, you know, owning owning their mistakes, et cetera, things like that, um, that lead to those things. But I don't think there's necessarily a sign of like, hey, this happens, like they're going to be leaving. Do narcs obsess over someone who discards them? <laughs> 100%. Uh, unfortunately. So uh, if a narc discards someone, a lot of times that obsession is like minimal or not very much. But um, someone that discards a narc uh, is typically on their mind a lot. Uh, I, I, and I, I'm saying this mainly for me. Like there might be some narcs out there that, that they're not completely. But for me, like, yes. And from like different narcs that I've like talked to interacted with like i've seen that be fairly consistent across the board of like when someone discards a narc like they will end up like obsessing over them so give you an idea like there was a girl that i was with it was mainly emotional affair um but there was also some physical towards the end and that person ended up discarding me completely it was like 
hey, like, this has happened in our lives. I don't want this anymore. Like, I'm out of my life. Thanks for everything in the past, but we're done. Don't ever contact me again. Um, I, like, actually respected that, but the emotion, the ties, the things, the obsession, the, you know, still looking her up on, on Instagram or Facebook or still trying to see, like, what's going on in her life. Like, all that stuff is very, very, very real. And it took a long time to be able to get over and to heal and to figure out how to move on. So in full transparency, that actual like relationship, like whenever I got that text from her, that was four years ago, um, July, like 23rd, like four years ago. And it was around, it was basically four years later that I finally like, deleted like photos or memories like off my phone like that's how long it took um which isn't good I'm not proud of that I'm not saying like oh look at me you know I'm just saying like mentally like in my head like it took that long to be able to move stuff out of my head um I don't know if that makes sense like that's that's revealing (laughs) it's a vulnerability which sucks I hate vulnerability but I'm trying to do this to be able to help people and not continue pridefully keeping stuff um can a narc get supply just off a job or a specific hobby i think so um i I think typically it's tied to more than that um like if they do a specific hobby and like there's people that love it or love that person like i could see that um for me like i got supply off my job Um, So I worked for Chick-fil-A for 10 years. I got supply off my job because during the time when I worked for Chick-fil-A, there was a good season um, about like half the time that I was there that I was the best in the business. Like I went around and I worked on coaching up and training drive throughs Um, I've worked with like 40 to 50 stores across the country going in, revamping their drive through team, coaching, like helping them. Like I'd go into a store that would do like 90, 97 cars in an hour and I'd leave the next week and they'd be averaging like 160. So like, I was like, I'm pretty good at my job, you know, that kind of thing. Um, the, the store in North Carolina that just set the world record. So they just did 500 cars in one hour. So world record, Chick-fil-A world record drive through all that kind of stuff. No one's ever done more than 500. No one's ever done 500 cars. Um, the, the operators that run that store, like I actually went and I coached them at their original store, which is out in Illinois. Um, yeah, Illinois, uh, whenever they were first starting. So, like, I helped, like, build up their drive through team before it even got there. Um, so, like, with that, like, my job was a spy because I was the best at my job. Like, that was a big ego boost. That was a big, like, supply and a filler for me is I could be on call 24-7. I could answer all the questions. I could deal with all the problems, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It was definitely a supply. Yeah, so people, like – um you know narcs will go with a lot of different things you know that get supply escorts um pornography like you know different addictions like a nicotine addiction um uh drugs alcohol you know like your your high hitter ones but then you have like you know like like food or you have um like blanking on like random stuff like gambling like like anything like could be a supply for sure um can a guy who chose to cheat on his girlfriend the guy who chose to cheat on his girlfriend. I've lost the tears. I'm not sure what you're asking. I'm sorry, Julie. Can a guy who chose... Did I miss something? I don't think so. I'm just not sure what your question is asking. Sorry. If you want to rephrase that and throw it in there. Um, but yeah. Yeah, narcs can have different things. Um, do you feel guilt while being unfaithful and lying, if not a lie? Um, no. Typically not. So I would say I'm starting to feel slightly more guilt at times um, than what I have in the past. And part of that is like actually acknowledging, saying, this is what I'm doing. This is what's wrong. Like starting to like to break down the barriers and the lies in my life that have kept me that way. So the reason why you don't feel like guilt whenever you're being unfaithful, lying, all that kind of stuff is disassociation. Like completely disassociating, completely disconnecting both lives. So like, here's the life with the affair partner. Here's the life with my wife. And it's like, it's just a switch, you know, like walk out the door, you know, hey, text the affair partner, walk back in the door, you know, hey, honey, I'm home. Like 
complete like dissociation. It's like, it's awful. Like it's, it's, I'm not, I'm not touting it as being like a good thing or anything like that, but it's like gaslighting, manipulating both parties, even like the narc itself, like gaslighting themselves to the point of like them being like, Hey, this is okay. Like I can live this way, this person, and I can live this way with this person. And like, it doesn't crisscross. You set like clear boundaries in your head of I'm going to act this way. And like, it was like frustrating too, because like, as, as one relationship would grow or, or change, that would oftentimes af- uh, reflect or affect the other relationship. So like I had an argument with the affair partner, okay, I'm probably going to be snoopy with the wife or vice versa. Or like, you know, I had a really good day with the affair partner, I might have a really good day with the wife. Like it was like complete like dissociation. Um, it was awful. Um, yeah, hopefully that answers the question a little bit. Dissociation is, is weird and it's stuff that I'm still trying to figure out and like work through because like even now... Sometimes it's easy to like split and dissociate stuff, which is frustrating. Do you obsess or are you discarding them even with a new supply? Sometimes, um, sometimes, because I know like some people will be with a new supply and they'll still be obsessing. They'll still be going back to the, the same person or like stalking them or thinking like, hey, like this is, yeah, no, I, I would say, and I would say, I wouldn't say like 100% all the time, but I would say like that's typical um, or at least an option that might be, that might happen. Um, Wendy, thanks for following. Appreciate it. Narg is obsessed with someone from from years ago who disagrees with him. Found him sending flowers years later. That's crazy. Yeah, so like um, early on, like I was obsessed. Um, no, I can't say that. I wasn't necessarily obsessed, but like one of the things that I hung on to that was still stuck in my head for a long period of time was a relationship with um, my first girlfriend. And it wasn't until I went through EMDR therapy that I was able to process the emotional trauma, shame, insecurity that stemmed from that relationship that I was able to like work through that. But otherwise, like it was still going back like years and years ago. That wasn't necessarily in my mind as far as like going back. I see your comment to like entice or tri- triangulate. But like for me, it was just like going back of stuff that was still affecting me today of like the shame, insecurity, thing like that. Will the narc ever do a final discard? Um, yes, um, but not not always. Yeah, compartmentalize would be be a good um, a good idea. Like, I guess when I think of like disassociation, I think of like big like divider compartmentalize. I think of like all these like small little ones. When like in reality, like the narc compartmentalizing is like a giant section of this life and a giant section of this life that both look like real and full lives to everybody. They just don't realize people just don't realize like it actually is disassociation or compartmentalizing different sides of it um yeah like yeah for sure narcs definitely do that compartmentalize disassociate um how long will the stalking continue (laughs) i don't know it's hard to say stalking will continue as long as you give opportunity for it to happen um like go ghost on the person block them on all social media like try to make sure that there's no way for them to contact you to find you to seek after you like take your take your instagram and make it private like you know change your change your handle like change your name on it and all that kind of stuff like uh, i'm not saying that you're you're causing the stalking but i'm saying like if you know that stalking is happening try to do whatever you can to completely get away from it like completely block anything that they could possibly do to stalk you because it will happen and and if a narc is good, they can stalk you through a million different ways, unfortunately. Um, yeah, unfortunately, it's frustrating. How do narcs still keep friends even when they know of all the lies, cheating, manipulation? So I would say like majority of the time their friends don't know um, about all the lies, cheating, manipulation. Or there's sometimes people that hold on to them as friends because of the fact that like they those people still believe that there is some good there or that they still want to you know, find something, that kind of thing. But, but a lot of times like the narcs are going to keep friends that are going to adore them, that are going to think they're the best thing ever, you know, et cetera. Um, and those friends aren't going to see that those narcissistic tendencies, at least not for a while, um, over a period of time, those eventually come out and they eventually get known, um, as far as what's going on. Curious if in your situation, if you feel that childhood tra- trauma created narcissism, um, yeah, trauma, but not not necessarily like the, the typical sense of like trauma, and more along the lines of like emotional trauma, um, a lack of uh, emotional vulnerability, uh, emotional connectedness, um, learning how to process like different emotions, feelings, thoughts, concerns, be able to work through those um, in an environment that was built up in like helping the person um, versus like 
giving advice or being over controlling or overbearing. And that's some of the stuff that I feel like um, we've started to see through therapy that we've seen like, hey, this is stuff that actually um, experience and stuff like that. Yeah. So like uh, childhood trauma, like someone being belittled by the mother constantly not showing love, like that definitely can can do that because there's not that emotional vulnerability. Like they're not able to actually be vulnerable with someone else. As a result, they internalize a lot. They put a lot of shame on themselves, a lot of insecurity there. And then it comes out lashing out. What ways can they stalk you besides social media? Um, I mean, if you move, um, so I mean, if you move, like uh, you can look up someone's like tax records. Uh, You can look up uh, real estate tax. Like you can find, someone's house by looking up their real estate tax um i think other stuff social media uh you can go through friends through social media like that's like a really a typical one an easy one you can set up like fake accounts um and get on those like social media and stuff like that is definitely like huge like there's people that have been like very obsessive that put like trackers on people's cars like like you name it like there's crazy people out there that have done it kind of a thing um there's just a couple couple thoughts um well we've got a bunch of comments that like shot up here let's see he knew the trauma was related to our problem but only recently learning about narcissism um okay yeah emotional neglect yep yeah, that's big as well um yeah once you're able to actually see like hey this is actual narcissism like not just narcissistic tendencies but like this person is actually being a narcissist or stuff like that sometimes they can make a lot of relationship things like really click um yep very true if he's paying for two leases why would you do that and basically go broke like probably just his pride wants to keep some type of pride or ego um but yeah i don't know 100 percent so experience too. His mother was more of an older party sister, not nurturing at all. Yeah, so like definitely like that emotional neglect, emotional abuse in one sense, or not having um in a, a place to emote, to have emotional vulnerability with someone to actually have someone tell you that like emotions are okay to have. Um, you know, like for me, like the catch for me is like you know I'll tell my wife, I'll tell my therapist, you know they'll talk about something, be like, what are you feeling? I'm like, feelings are bad. Like no, no feelings. Like you're not allowed to have feelings. Um, just because like, that's like what I'm used to. That's like, in, that's ingrained in my head. It's been only recently to actually kind of like think through and get to the place where I'm like, okay, like it's okay to have feelings, <laughs> you know, like feelings aren't necessarily like good or evil kind of thing. But for the longest time, like I wouldn't even let feelings like pop up. Um, uh, why do they seem to implode after we discard them? Uh, yeah, so, like, part of it is, like, the lack of control. Like, they weren't in control of what happened, so, like, they're going to get mad. They're going to get frustrated. They're going to blow up. Um, yeah, uh, I'm blanking on how to answer that the best way, but that's a common thing. You're discarding, you are taking, and you're putting in control. I mean, it's kind of like the old thing of, like, the, the girlfriend or the boyfriend, like, they want to break up with the other person before they break up with them. Like, it's kind of that in one sense. Uh, why do they play the victim and say they're not going to cheat anymore and go back to it? Uh, because they don't want you to leave. They want to keep the supply. They want to make sure they have that control 100%. So um, anytime they can play the victim, like I can play the victim, it makes me feel better about myself. It keeps the other person around. Uh, you make false promises. You do whatever it takes to, to keep the supply. You do whatever – you put whatever lie you can in place that's going to um, provide you with the thing – you want in the moment like, so maybe that's you don't want the shame maybe that's again going back you don't want the humiliation or maybe that's you know you don't want it to, to come out of there being like a lie or someone revealing who you actually are and so like you know no i'm not going to do that like blah, blah blah you know and then they're like okay i'll stay maybe you just go right back to it very it's very typical well narc lose respect for a girlfriend if she continues to take back up and she's yeah 100 percent. so if uh if uh, the narc continues to cheat and the person keeps taking them back, then in the narc's mind, that means you're okay with what I just did. So if I'm cheating on you and it happens multiple times and you say, okay, like, hey, I forgive you, I'll take your back, then in my mind, I twist it, I justify it, I'm like, okay, well, must not have been that big a deal. She must not mind that much. 
you know, it's going to open up more opportunities for me either for the cheat or me either to have some sort of like mental or emotional abuse after that, because obviously she accepted what I already did. So yeah, it's not good. It's not pretty. Um, had the hardest time understanding why I wasn't enough. I happily expecting a baby and he kept it's like dating. Where'd you come again? Um, and he kept something. Maybe he kept cheating. I don't know. Um, but yeah, like, yeah, that, that's one thing that's like, you know, a lot of people are like, you know, hey, I don't feel like I'm enough. Like, why am I not enough for the narcissist and things like that? Um, in reality, like, you are. Okay, yeah, he kept cheating. Um, in reality, like, you are. You are enough. The problem is um, the narc wasn't enough for you. Like, the narc wasn't enough of a man to own up what he was going through. He wasn't enough of a man to say, like, hey, like, I'm cheating. He wasn't enough of a man to say, like, hey, this is what I'm going through. Now, yeah, there's some stuff with, like, emotional vulnerability. Like, they're not used to it. They don't know how to articulate. Like, there's different things like that. But we can put all that in, like, the victim card. But in reality, it comes down to, like, hey, this person wasn't a man enough to say, hey, like, I'm a cheater. I'm a liar. Blah, 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 blah. This is where I'm at, you know. Um Missed a couple of comments because it updated slow here. Uh, am I a narcissist if I self sabotage after a long period of being cheated on, etc. In relationship? No, not necessarily. Um, you, you have to look through all the tendencies to see what you match up as far as a narcissist. Like a lot, of, oftentimes people that have been abused by narcissists, stuff like that, end up having, um, like either like self abuse or like reactionary abuse kind of thing, whether that's to someone else or or to themselves kind of thing. Yeah, that is very true. They already don't respect you. Otherwise, they think you're just okay with cheating. Yep. Um, falsely arrested because I discarded him and exposed him. That's crazy. Not not super crazy in the narc world, but like in the regular like people world, like that's ridiculous and crazy. But yeah, they'll go to extremes to make sure that they look better, um, that they maintain that image. Um, yes, and some there. Yep, they're more than enough. Can't fill up the bucket with the bottom. That's a good illustration. Do narcs always have one person they come back to as they let him? Um, sometimes, sometimes, or you know, it really just depends if someone actually stands up and actually blocks the person. Um, sometimes they do have someone they feel connected to, um, for sure. Um, and sometimes that connection is like super strong. Sometimes that connection is like a thousand percent narcissistic or like. 50% narcissistic like it's it's very different like I had I had someone that I was like super connected to that actually like a friend that I was super connected to that actually like helped me start to move away from narcissism you know but um yeah does an art feel the normal emotions that come with family members death or is it mimic um I don't know for everybody but for me like no don't have the normal emotions when it comes to family family members death and it wasn't mimicked I just didn't have them um you know, I was like sad or like 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 family funerals stuff like that like I've I've never cried at a family's funeral uh, a family member's funeral like not my grandpa not my uncle not uh, my other grandpa like anything like that like I haven't like cried at them like I've I felt like sad um, but like, you almost have to, you, you almost do have to mimic, you almost have to kind of fake like, oh yeah, I'm really sad. Like someone comes up to you and like, how you doing? You know, you have to like put on that show of like, Hey, you're sad. But in reality, like sometimes what's going through the narc's head is like, okay, next, moving on. Like, it's almost like that person's gone, that person's done. So then they're like, move on next. Now it's a little bit different. I think if the narc has like a very like, deep connection or like an emotional connection like with that person or like emotional like affair with that person like I don't know 100% because I haven't had anybody like that in my life that's died in one sense but as far as like typical regular emotions of you know this person died or you just ran over a squirrel in the road like you know like different things like that like they normally don't have that type of emotion it might be mimicked or tricked um um what are the triggers? Uh, what are the triggers for them to go back to cheating? Uh, oh, there could be millions. It really just depends. It could be uh, 
it really just depends. Like it could be like an addictive nature they had with like pornography or something like that, that they see something and all of a sudden like they're back in that same place. They're back there like mentally. It could be, um, I, I guess like one for me would be like the emotional, like for me, like growing up and not having that emotional vulnerability, if you're at the place where you don't feel emotionally vulnerable where you are and you can find that emotional connection with someone else that can be like a trigger. So like a trigger for me. So like, I have to be careful of who I talk to or who I try to connect with or stuff like that, because like, it's, it's very easy for me to connect with someone on like an emotional level. And then that turned into like an affair or a cheating relationship. Um, so I have to guard and watch that because I know that's a trigger for me. Like if, if we're arguing home or I don't feel emotionally safe or vulnerable at home, but I can find that with someone else, that's where we're going. So I have to limit those have interactions. Um, my accused me today of cheating. I literally haven't left the house in years without him. Yeah. Typically when that happens from a narcissist perspective, that means they're feeling insecure and they're probably cheating. Um, I can't say that hundred percent, you know, that might not be the case, but a lot of times, uh, if they're accusing you of cheating, they're probably already cheating. Uh, it's crazy to think they've a in the car. Yeah, I mean, I knew, so I knew of one narcissist that was with a married woman and, like, was controlling her, manipulating her, that, like, had, like, trackers. Like, he, he had, like, gaslighted her so much that whenever they would meet up, um, he actually had a, um, he actually had, like, a cell phone jammer. So, like, whenever they meet up, he would, like, put on the cell phone jammer so that the husband couldn't even track the phone, like her phone. I like couldn't even log into iCloud and see like find my iPhone or anything like that because he would like jam the signal. But he had her convinced. He had her gaslighted that it was an okay thing to do so they could keep hidden. Um, let's see. Yeah, so it's crazy sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. So mom with four monkeys, but he's one of the cheating. Absolutely. <coughs> um, my research is accurate. I guess I know who's actually doing that business. Um, I got was numb and distant and it hurt. He didn't even try to pretend. Yeah. I mean, sometimes they don't, sometimes they can't pretend. Sometimes they can't, like they don't know how to. Does a narcissist have a deep void inside? Depends on the narc, but yeah, I would say they do. Um, they might have like a, a shame or emotion or like something that like they're, they're missing or they think they're missing, you know, they might not even know. Um, if he has to be online, he works from home, doesn't go anywhere because he has to keep an eye on me. Yeah, it could be online, could be like over text, over WhatsApp, over Snap, like you name it. Like you can find the apps, you can put the hidden stuff on your phone, like anything like that. Um, let's see, why do not still play the victim and not admit to things even when they've been caught that ego pride um you know they'll they don't want they don't want that mass to slip they don't want to be proved wrong so they're typically not um i actually refused to sign because at the hospital but took me to court to do it um i don't know why i'm like blanking on like what's going on with that question but um yeah, I mean, it might, might might take you to court to be able to make him look like the good guy or something. I, I, I don't know. I think that's a, that's a tough one. Um, let's see. Exceptional. Seem less emotionless. Um, I know the driver's side dash with the fuse box. Yeah. Um, that's actually a that's actually like a good place for it. I know like some car mechanics that have actually done it. So if you if you take it and you put it in the driver's side dash, or there's even ones now that you can put um underneath the driver's underneath the driver's seat not the seat sorry underneath the drive underneath the steering wheel i can't talk okay underneath the steering wheel um where they plug in the receiver to be able to test like the the, the codes on your car um to see like what the check engine light or stuff like that there's actually ones that they can plug in there that'll track the car um and you never know it and it never runs out of power because it's actually plugged into a power source um that's one there's other ones that you can get that are like small um i had some for a period of time not that i used to like track people but i was actually using it um to test out stuff for like tracking um assets with work we'd have like bags that we'd send out um and like the ones that i had were like really like tiny um i never use them on like people or anything like that but it was we were trying to do like some asset tracking we use like square 
not square, uh, tile and like some other stuff like that, just to see how it could work. Um, yeah, no, very true. Like they're, they're fearless as far as like they'll do the stupidest stuff, you know, wait until you fall asleep and go to this person next door. Like, absolutely. It's crazy. Best way to shout out NARC out. End it when you have to co-parent. Uh, Gray Rock. Um, don't let what they say, what they do, like, affect you. Um, like, really, like, you know, them coming at you, hammering you, whatever it is. Like, don't let them get a reaction out of you. If they get a reaction out of you, they know they can reproduce that. If they can reproduce that, that gives them hope to be able to control you, to control your emotions, control your thoughts, how you're going to react. You know, being able to see... Mm -hmm. Tyler, what's going on? What's going on? Hey, what's going on, man? Hey, we're doing a little hey. bit. Of, we're we're doing a little bit of uh, racing Q and A tonight. We have got race day tomorrow. I want to hear your questions. <laughs> All right, wrong person to go live with. So it like popped up on my screen, so I wasn't sure what was going on. Um. Why they continue to lie when it would be in their best interest not to. Yeah, so, like, sometimes, like, they don't know how to stop. Like, sometimes, like, they don't know, like, how to, uh, like, it's like it's like a second nature. Like, it's something that, like, they don't even think about till lies already happen. And by the time the lies already happen, they feel the shame of, like, oh, crap, I already lied. Okay, never mind. Let me not feel that anymore. Okay, now I need to put another lie on top of that to keep it. Um, yeah. Uh, best way to show knock out gray rock. Um, don't let don't let them get a, a reaction. Um, narcissistic rape triggers. I don't really know on that. Sorry. Um, how do I know if he's been putting something on my phone in my car? Um, you'd have to like look, go through all your phone, check to see if there's apps, check to see if you're signed in, sign in the iCloud on your computer, see what other phones or apps access it. So it affects you emotionally, feels them to continue to be. Yeah, absolutely. Like if they can get a, a reaction out of you, then they know they can keep doing that. Let's open the mouth and that's what comes out. Yeah, it's very natural. Um, why do narcs get married if they're never satisfied with one person? Um, honestly, a lot of times, like I know a lot of narcs that, that get married or like go the next step with another person because they just think that's what they're supposed to do. Like that's the next step. That's what they think they need to do or that's what they need to do to look normal um or to or to come across like normal to some people i heard rage and i feel devalued unworthy or reminded of his past yeah um so like a trigger a trigger for me for narcissistic like rage and like anger is a feeling like devalued probably probably not necessarily but it'd be like the idea of like disrespected or like not respected um so like me saying like, hey, like don't do that, and the person does exactly the opposite. Like that's something I'm like, Rrr, you know, um, still trying to work through that, and, and it's gotten a lot better. It's gotten a lot better, but like that's like one of the triggers for me is I'll be like, you know, like this makes me mad. Like please don't do this, and then the other person does it, and I'm like, Rrr, you know, not good. Um, what's the biggest red flag I should look for? Um. The narc, it's like nine of them. Look up the narcissistic traits. Uh, like lying, gaslighting, um, manipulation, like trying to get something out of you, out of other people. Um, lying is a big one. I think they're just going through the motions. Telltale sign. Uh, I don't know for sure. Like ly lying is a big one. Gaslighting, like rewriting a history, like. You know, if you have, like, an argument and then you come back to it a day later and, like, that's not what happened, you know. Um, Telltale sign. Love bombing. Yeah, okay, yeah, that, that's a good one. Um, it, it, it's hard because, like, if a narc's really good, like, you might not know when they're actually love bombing, when they're not love bombing, um, et cetera, things like that. All right, I'm going to take a couple more questions and I'm going to wrap it up. Um, for those of you guys that have, have a bunch more questions or anything like that, like, save them. And remember to come back on next week, um, Thursday at 8.30 live. Um, it'll be myself and Heather. Um, as long as she's feeling better, myself and Heather Coleman-Voss will be coming on. We'll be doing a, a dual live again. Um, if you didn't see our dual live, 
last last week. Um, click on the link um, on on my uh, on my bio. Click on the link on my bio. You can go to YouTube. You can watch some of it. Uh, it's a long it's a long one. It's like an hour and something, so you can like skim through. Um, I'm gonna work on like uploading them and make them a little bit little bit easier and all. So, um, but yeah. So, guys, check out the live from last week. If you have any other questions, things like that, then feel free to. Um, feel free to add, add them and think of them. Um, if you guys haven't, uh, go follow my wife. She's on TikTok as well. So she's got two different accounts. Uh, Kayla Taylor. I think it's just Kayla Taylor. And then also, um, hope in the healing. So that's, that's one as well. So especially if you guys have dealt with different narcs and things like that, like just give her some love. Like she definitely needs to, to hear from you guys. Um, just have that support. Um, she's more on the empath side. So every time people put up stuff, um, and put like, you know, like bad comments and stuff like that. She's like, maybe I should just delete the account. I'm like, no, like you just got 2000 people. Anyways, look her up, uh, hope in the healing, um, check out, uh, previous lives, look at my YouTube, uh, up in my bio. And if you have any questions, just save them and come back next Thursday at eight 30, Heather Coleman Voss and myself will be doing another dual live and talking through some questions all. Thank you all so much for your support and just chatting. Uh, hope to see you guys next week. Thank you, guys.